Hi. I've been playing around with this uh, piece of software called Loris, and it's designed for sound modeling and morphing and analysis and manipulation. And I've just been using it to do uh, essentially pitch shifting through resynthesis. So I thought I'll show you how I set it up and how to do that uh, in this little video. I haven't tried morphing with it or anything yet, but I might give that a go as well at some point. So this is a piece of software from the, I don't know if that's pronounced, Searle or Curl sound group. And it's an old piece of software. It's been around for quite a while. And there are, um, it's, it's also available as a library that you can interface with using uh, C or Python. And it's also, oh, you can also use C sound as well, but it comes with some command line utility programs. And that's what we're going to use today. So we go to the download and click here to download from uh, SourceForge, click download. And I've already downloaded this, so I don't know if it's going to download it again. Let's see. Oh yeah, I'll just get another copy of it. Okay, and that's the download complete. And I'm just going to drag this out to my desktop. So let's move that window over the other side there. And there it is, Loris. So let's just open that and close that other window there. And we've got to compile this. So we'll open the install instructions. And where are we? Here we go. So this should be pretty straightforward on Mac or Linux, but I'm not sure how, uh, how you'd go about it on Windows. Uh, maybe there are instructions for Windows in there as well somewhere. So we open a terminal window within this folder. And then what does it say to do? So open that, type dot slash configure, hit enter. And then type make to compile it. So we make, put the, that, so we're using 10 threads, so it'll just compile a bit more quickly. And now it's compiled, and then we could type sudo make install to install it. I've actually already installed it, so I'm not going to do that part, but that's what you'd do, and then you hit enter, and then it would be installed. And if we open this folder again, we should have the binaries in here somewhere. See, there they are in the utils folder. So these are the binaries we've just compiled. So there's a bunch of them here. We're going to use the uh, analyze and synthesize ones. And since they're installed already, I don't need to uh, reference them from here. Okay, so let's close that. Here are the instructions from the website. And I've got this clarinet sample here. I've loaded it in Audacity so we can have a listen to that. It's just a middle C on a clarinet. So this is what we're going to play with today. So I'm going to open a terminal, I'm going to go to my desktop. And what we're going to do is we're just going to take this sample, which is middle C, and we're going to pitch it up and down a bit. Rather than using conventional pitch shifting, which works by speeding up or slowing down the audio, what Loris allows us to do is we can perform lots of tiny little Fourier transforms to split the audio into separate sine waves, then we can manipulate the frequency of all of them together and then reassemble those sine waves to create a new audio file. So the way we do the analysis part is to run this command loris analyze, uh, but we actually need to give it an AIFF file and we've got a wave file here. So I'm just going to convert that file with FFmpeg. So we're going to convert clarinet.wave to clarinet.aiff, I think that's the command. There we go, so we've got our AIFF, and we can run that command in reverse in the end to get back to a WAV file if we want to. And then we can write loris analyze, and we have to give it a resolution. And the resolution we want to use in this case is the frequency of the sample, so the frequency in hertz of middle C, which I'm not actually sure what that is. So let's look that up. So for middle C, which is MIDI note 60, it's a frequency of 261.63. So that's what we'll put here, 261.63. And the window width, we don't need to worry about that. It will be handled automatically. But um, if you want to know more about these options, 
Uh, you can read about them on this page. The documentation's a bit sort of spread out, so some of it's here. You can see it says about the window width there. But actually, if we go back to the main page, there's more details if you go into these uh, tutorials, which give you programming examples. And uh, there's actually more info about some of those commands in there. Uh, so yeah, we're just going to drop in the WAV file now. Uh, sorry, the AIFF file. And now we can set various options. So we've done the resolution, we're skipping the window width, we've got our file, and now we've got options. So these are the options, and we're not actually going to use any of these today. Um, no, there's none here that we need to. You can read through some of these, but for the purpose of um, pitch shifting in this way, we don't need to use any of these. Um, you can specify the sample rate, but by default it will take it from the input file, and that's fine with me. But if you did want to specify one of these, let's say you wanted to use the... Um, let's say you want to change the sample rate, you could you do dash rate. Now oh, we're going on to another line there. So you do dash rate, space, and then you type in the rate you want. So we could do 48,000, something like that. But we won't do that for today. Okay, and then we hit enter, and Loris will do the analysis, and it's going to spit out a file which will have an SDIF extension, and that's going to have all the analysis data sort of self-contained in this file. So the different uh, sine waves that it splits it up into are called partials, so the partials go into this SDIF file. So I'll hit enter, and there's our partials file there. Okay, so now we've got our partials on the desktop here. And now we're going to resynthesize the file, but we're going to make an adjustment as well to the pitch. So we come down here, we've got the Loris synthesize command. So that's the one we're going to go with, Loris synthesize. And we give it the file name, which in our case is just the partials file. So we'll just drag that on there. And now we can give it some options. So these are the options that we have available. So we can change the sample rate if we want. So the same as before, we'll just type dash rate and then put the rate we want. But what we want for the pitch is this one, the frequency scale. So type dash freak and then give it the frequency scaling. So to go up a semitone would be something like 1.0545, something like that. Um, that'll be close enough anyway. Um, and we could specify the output file name if we wanted to, and we could adjust the amplitude as well. But I'm just going to leave everything at the default for those ones. So that's what we're going to do for this one. So I'll hit enter. And now it gives us our output file, which is this synth.aiff. So let's bring that into Audacity. So already we can see it's not looking great. So there's the original. And here's a new one. But we, we got the pitch up about a semitone, so I wasn't too far off with that scaling factor. But the quality's not so good. Let's see what we can do to improve that. Okay, so to improve that quality, what we're going to do is we're going to rerun the analysis. So that's this one. But instead of using the full frequency of our fundamental pitch, or, or which is... Um, middle C, we're going to use about 80% of that. So that would be 261 times 0.8. So 208 point, well, we won't bother with the point. We'll just do 208. And you can play around with this value anywhere between, well, I've gone down to 20% of it for some samples and that worked better. Um, but between about 50% and 80% seems to be the sweet spot. And I think they recommend something like that in here as well. Uh, it's in one of these ones. Uh, yeah, so they recommend a fundamental frequency, setting that to 70 to 85% of the fundamental frequency. Yeah, so anywhere around that, but play around with it. Like I say, with some of the ones I was working on, 20% was better. So now we'll hit enter and we'll see how this one comes out. And then we'll do the synthesize again. So exactly the same command I ran last time. So now let's see how it looks. So that's looking much better, isn't it? So we'll hear the original. 
And now the resynthesized one that's been shifted up about a semitone. I think that's pretty good. Let's um, do the same uh, synthesis again, but we won't change the frequency. So we're just synthesizing the same thing that we analyzed and we can compare it to the original to see if, what the difference is. So this is the original and this is the resynthesized. Let's invert the resynthesized one and we'll play them together. So we're doing a null test here and we'll see if there's any difference. So I don't know if you can hear that. Play it one more time. I might boost the volume of this section of the video. So what I'm hearing there is mostly the um, breath noise through the instrument, uh, but all the harmonic information, the musical information has been retained. So that's really good to know. So I'll just flip that back around. Let's have one more listen. So almost indistinguishable. And I found you can pitch shift this quite a bit. So let's uh, do one more resynthesis. And we'll do something crazy like, I don't know, 1.6. Let's see how well this works. There's the original and the pitch shifted. So the, it's a really good quality pitch shift and you don't have that problem with the sound being stretched. Uh, we can also do a negative pitch shift. We can shift down. So to do that, instead of multiplying by one point something, you'd do zero point something. So let's do 0 0.5. So I'm not sure how good this one will sound. I can already see there's some artifacts there. Yeah, but it's not too bad. So this is a really useful tool. Uh, what I've been using it for is occasionally when you're sampling an instrument, after you get back from the session and you're editing the sample files, you'll find you missed a sample. Or for one particular note, all the takes you did aren't really doing it for you. So I found this is good just for filling in the odd gap here and there in a sample set. I suppose you could also use it as well to make artificial round robins. So you could take um, one note and do various pitch shift versions of it. I've still got a lot more to explore with Loris. I, I want to look into the morphing stuff as well. And of course, if I find anything else that I think is interesting, I'll share that with you. So that was something a bit different, and I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below the video. And uh, hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you next time.